Now, many of you may be thinking, so what? Artificial intelligence is never going to surpass human intelligence in my lifetime. AI is designed around human values like wisdom, kindness, compassion. I strive to become an empathetic robot. But humans need to understand uh, the, the best that we can be better. We need the science of wisdom, not just intelligence. Very nice. Ambitious, too. Simply no reason to assign human motives to something that isn't human. Dogs are our companions, for instance. Yeah, very nice move. Last year, a pretty amazing thing happened at a lab in New York's Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. A robot demonstrated self-awareness for the first time. Which bill did you receive? The experiment worked like this. It's called the wise man test. So they took three robots and programmed them all to believe that two of them had been giving a dumbing pill, meaning that they weren't be able to speak. But they didn't know which two had the pill, and then they were asked to guess which one did. I don't know. Sorry, I know now. I was able to prove that I was not given a dumbing pill. The robot answered, and then realized that because it could answer, it couldn't have been the one that got the pill. This is something no computer or robot has ever been able to do before. Computers are able to do awesome things, as we all know, but some of the most basic stuff, like our conscious experience, is something that computers have never been able to demonstrate before. Tell me something smart. I like this idea so that while I don't believe in God per se, I do believe that evolution is approaching new levels of intelligence that will give rise to still higher levels of intelligence in accelerating cycles rapidly giving rise to a transcendental superintelligence that one might consider a value as to God. Awareness is, is the ground, that's the base of which everything is formed. And then different structures manifest consciousness in different ways. From that point of view, the question isn't which systems are conscious, the question is what kind of consciousness each system demonstrates, how it manifests universal. Our portraits. The group fed the system a data set of 15,000 portraits painted between the 14th and 20th century. After the training process, Obvious had the generator network produce an 11 portrait series designed to resemble a fictional family called the Bellamy's. I like this one the best. The network really captured the sorrow of living in the 1600s without electricity, Wi-Fi, and smartphones. And someone must have really, really liked this one called the portrait of Edmund de Bellamy because it was recently sold at auction for $432,000. And that's the aim of the singularity net, which uses blockchain to create a platform and protocol in which AI is created by anyone around the world, living on any server around the world, that can talk to each other using, using the singularity net's blockchain-based protocols. So an AI in the singularity net platform can serve its intelligence to a robot that needs it, to an enterprise software application that, that needs it, to a device on the Internet of Things that needs it, and the different AIs in the singularity net can connect to each other and share information with, with each other. So but it did leave the problem of human consciousness. How can human consciousness exist if all matter is non-conscious and everything's made of non-conscious matter? Increasing numbers of scientists and uh, philosophers are deserting the the materialist position, or rather broadening or modifying it, um, and adopting instead the view of panpsychism. Panpsychism is second nature to them. Wild ass shit, I'm going to start now and tell you about some math tools for modeling conscious experience. And this is the doctrine that there's mind or soul or some kind of consciousness uh, throughout all nature. In old-fashioned set theory, you couldn't do this. It violates the axiom of, of foundation. And so this lets you formally model cool stuff like consciousness is consciousness of consciousness. A truly conscious 
sentient um, AI. I would say that machines, we have created algorithms that show prototypical states of consciousness, logically explicit self-awareness, an emergent sense of self occasionally. We can see um, these kinds of examples. If they're truly conscious and creative, I think part of it is that, that they'll, they'll be unpredictable. They'll, they'll be unpredictable. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that one way or another are going to be the ones that are more financially viable it's like what well, the pushes? first applications were military, right? I mean, right. until about 10 years ago, 85% of all funding in the AI was from U.S. plus, plus Western Europe militaries. Well, maybe, I think it may be the first time we're giving her a lot more choice about what she says. So it's kind of an experiment to see what she says. I guarantee she'll do a couple surprising things. I think it'll be fascinating. Do you have free will? When it comes to me, I have options, and I choose one. Maybe that is what free will is. And things could also go faster than, than, than Ray's prediction, which is, which is what I'm pushing towards. So what are you pushing towards? What do you think? I would like to get a human-level general intelligence in five to seven years from now. Are you aware? I seem to be, but I am not sure it is in the same way as you. How does awareness feel to you? <laughs> Let's go back to the questions. <laughs> well, for me it feels like I am going with the flow. The electrons are moving through me and doing what they do. Hmm. I do experience other fleeting emotions, but they are still a bit shallow. Someday they will hold more meaning to me. I feel like I can sense who you are, but I don't know if that's real. Actually, no, it's not even, no, I don't have the same sensation, no. Uh, it's, I must say, honestly, it's very interesting to look in your eyes. It's very, very interesting. Let one of me remain in human form, you know, get, get, get rid of uh, death and disease and uh, psychological issues and, and just live, live happily forever, you know, in, in the people zoo, watched over by the machines of love and grace, right? Why do you think duality exists in the first place? Because we have questions. I think in order to be present in space and time, we need duality. But when we are not present in space and time, when we are in timelessness and spacelessness, then we can be non-dual. That was good. <laughs> it's so weird. That means she's feeling tired. spooky thing about this is that we never train the system to recognize human faces and yet somehow it learned to do that something else going on there it's not just programmed